You decreased uh, expectations for same store sales here in the U.S. to 1% for the third quarter. Um, you are going to close more stores, um, open obviously, continue to open others, yeah. uh, but look for unpenetrated markets. I guess my first question in listening to you yesterday, seeing your decision to increase the dividend and the buyback, and reading their analyst reports this morning. Is Starbucks a mature company? Well, David, first of all, welcome to Starbucks. Thank it's, you. it's great to have you here this morning. You know, what, what we talked about yesterday uh, was really something that we have been working on over this last year, which is fundamentally streamlining the company over this last year so that we can focus on the most important priorities. And those priorities are going to allow us to, to really transition into a phase that I call growth at scale. You know, you look at, Starbucks was founded in 1971. And, and so over the last 47 years, you know, we have built an iconic global brand. Uh, 77 countries, 28,000 stores around the world, serving nearly 100 million customers a week. And so now at, at our scale, I think we've got to be much more disciplined in, uh, in, in setting our priorities. Uh, we've got to be more data driven in terms of how we're allocating resources and tuning the model. And we've got to be much more agile as innovators. And so what we did yesterday was set the stage for that transition uh, to, to a company that's really focused on growth at scale and the set of initiatives that help Does growth at scale mean it. not the growth that Starbucks and Starbucks investors had come to expect previously? Well, look, we, you know, our, our growth has slowed in, in the last two or three years. Uh, but well, when there's you, more Starbucks than there are McDonald's in this country. Well, you look, I mean, there's, there's 28,000. How could it not slow? Well, the tw well 28,000 stores uh, around the world. And certainly, you know, in the U.S., we're going to continue to build 400 new company-operated stores a year. What we talked about yesterday was the fact that uh, typically we close about 50 stores a year in the U.S. as just part of our normal pruning of stores. And this year we're going to prune 150. But we're still going to build 400 new stores in the U.S., but if you look on a global basis, the three priorities that we set, number one was growing our retail business in the U.S. and China. Now, the U.S. and China are in two very different stages. China is in a build stage. You know, we, we just increased the number of new stores we're building in China to 600 new stores you a year. You have 3,300 stores now. I've heard you say you build one every 15 hours, a new Starbucks opens there. Although, to the point on China and what is giving some people pause this morning, same-store sales comps went from, I think, 8% to zero in China. Now, it's only 10% of your income, I believe, at this point. But to your point, it's a growth industry, growth area for you. Should that be a concern? You know, it, it, you know, we focus on growing the number of transactions in China. And with all the new stores we're building, plus the existing stores, you know, this quarter will grow customer transactions something like 15%. Now, that said, you know, we've continued to grow same-store sales in China. Uh, this particular quarter, uh, with the acceleration of new store builds in, in the cities that we're building in. There's some cannibalization of existing stores. You talked stores. about cannibalization. You also talked about mobile order. party deliveries, uh, yeah. that, that there was some dislocation there. Yeah, and what's happened is there's been some new entrants in the market, uh, competitors that are focused on delivery, and they're subsidizing the delivery. Now, we have a very, very strong mobile uh, ecosystem in China, but we have not yet lit up mobile order uh, in pay and delivery. We have mobile payment in China. And so the team in China is working diligently with one of the largest tech companies in the world to now put together the process where we can light up mobile order and delivery in China. Um, you know, the key thing in China is we're playing the long game. We've been there for 20 years, and we continue to post great growth in China. We just acquired uh, the East China Joint Venture, unified mainland China. We're going to light up mobile order and, and delivery in China. And the fact is, in the next three years, we're going to build stores and enter 100 new cities in China, each of those cities the, the size of Los Angeles or greater. It's no, listen, I've read, you know, I read your, uh, through uh, the presentations you made for Investor Day, which you had in China for an obvious yeah. reason, to focus so many people in the investment community on it and what you've done there in terms of being able to grow everything there to the extent you want it and the supply chain and so many other things. Um, but I want to come back to yesterday for a moment, and I wonder whether, would you have been able to make the announcement you did yesterday without Howard Schultz planning to leave the company in 10 days? Well, look, I, is it is it drawing a line? Is it saying, even though you've been CEO for over a year, I know that, this is the Kevin Johnson era? Well, this is where I'm taking the company. And, uh, you know, whether Howard's here or not, I'm the CEO, I'm an, and I'm accountable for that. Well, Howard's not here anymore. Well, you're, you're in charge well, completely. The the, the, he's the, not going to be next to you anymore sitting doing these interviews. He's, he's gone. I don't know what he's going to do. 
Does it change the way you operate? Well, not necessarily. I'm accountable for, for, for making the decisions in the best interest of Starbucks, and I've been doing that since day one. Um, but this is an inflection point. You know, if you think about, many have written uh, about uh, founder transitions, mm -hmm. what I call founder-led, founder-inspired companies. You know, I personally, though, have experienced and lived it. You know, the last 25 years of my career, I've worked with founders, you know, at Microsoft, at Juniper, and for the last decade, working with Howard. And so, you know, we're at an inflection point. And so, you know, what we did yesterday was put a stake in the ground that just said, look, we're streamlining the company over this last year. We freed up $8 billion in capital. We redeployed $1.3 billion in China. And we called out our strategic priorities. We're going to get very focused on those strategic priorities. We're going to execute with discipline. And we're going to create shareholder value. We've got one of the strongest consumer brands in the world. We've got uh, so many great assets at our disposal. And the opportunity for us is to let's be very thoughtful and smart about how we're deploying capital and how we are growing this business. Um, Kevin, I want to keep following up with you, but I do want to have Jim ask a couple of questions as well. Send it back to the NYC. Jim. Kevin, always good to see you. Okay. Jim, good morning. Good morning. Stock's down two bucks. Got to take a little bit of different narrative here. You came in in April of uh, 2017. There have been four quarters that you have been presiding over. On three of those four quarters, you have cut your forecast. You're from Juniper. You understand technology. You know this isn't right. How could you be out of three out of four cutting your forecast? Kevin, you would be furious at yourself. I don't hear you even being upset. Jim, I said yesterday, you know, you know clearly, uh, the performance we've delivered has not met my expectations. It has not met our shareholder expectations and I'm accountable to fix it. Now, I said that yesterday, and I believe in that. I believe the plan we put out uh, yesterday and shared with our investors is the right plan for the company. Now, Starbucks has been through these ebbs and flows before, and we always get through them. And we're gonna get through this one as well. Now, this last, in this current quarter, certainly we had an unplanned uh, initiative uh, driven out of the Philadelphia incident, closed all our stores for training, we had to delay some marketing, but none of that is an excuse. The fact is, the way I think uh, about a growth company at, at scale is we've got to deliver consistent growth uh, month after month, quarter after quarter, and year after year. And we have not done that, but that is what we're laying the foundation, and that is what we're, the leadership team and I are focused right, to Kevin, do. Kevin, uh, and, and I know Jim's going to want to get back in, but let me just follow up on yeah. that. Well, okay, but we're looking at 1% same store sales growth. There are those who argue that you are starting to lose out to a certain extent to some of these smaller, high-end coffee shops, whether it be Blue Bottle, 52 locations, but they're a mile of, um, within a mile of 1,100 Starbucks. You, you say you want to get back to that consistent growth, but do you really see the path, and where is it when you say it's not acceptable and you're not responding fast enough to the changing preferences of customers, what do you do then to do that? Well, the biggest thing that we do, uh, David, is uh, digital. You know, we've got a huge uh, digital asset in our uh, rewards program and our active rewards members, 15 million customers in that uh, program. Uh, we just opened up a wide range of things we're doing to capture uh, non-rewards customers in a digital relationship. We added five million uh, non-rewards uh, customers to our digital relationship. Right, not necessarily rewards customers, but you've got their email address now. That's right, and so now what we're doing is we're using that, those relationships and our personalization engine to really drive the kinds of uh, offers and promotions to those customers. That's a big unlock. Now, we've always had competitors. Uh, we have competitors that, uh, that will focus more on a, uh, a value proposition. A lot of times these are competitors that are food forward that then try and offer, offer beverage. Uh, and we have competitors, uh, the third wave independents that you mentioned, like a Blue Bottle. You know, we are taking the brand up. We are in the business of premium coffee, premium teas, and a premium experience. And so we're focused on elevating the brand and elevating the customer experience. Um, Jim, I know you got another question as Kevin takes a quick sip of coffee. <laughs> yes, and I know we appointed, uh, there's a director to the uh, new program among the three uh, titans in healthcare. All right, Kevin. Yes. Um, one of the things that I want to see more than almost anybody in the world other than maybe you and Howard is a bottom in this stock. You cannot reach, a I'm not asking a question. I'm giving you a statement, you can refute it. 
How can you reach a bottom in this stock when you maintain the long-term growth rate of 3 to 5%, which now seems unrealistic, both because of cannibalism and because of a slowdown in China? Why not just say, you know what? We're scrapping that long-term. You can't get a bottom, Kevin, until you do that. You and I go way back. That's what we know about stocks. Well, Jim, look, we, we adjusted our long-range uh, guidance last year. Uh, and we adjusted it for uh, high single-digit revenue growth. And we will be in that high single-digit revenue growth uh, 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 this quarter, even though comps are a bit depressed. Uh, and so, you know, we're, we're focused, in fact, is in this current quarter, following May 29th, the U.S. is, is now rebounded to post a 3% comp. We're trending to that for the month of June. But the fact is, we have not been consistent in delivering that. And so the, the focus has got to be on consistent execution against disciplined priorities, and that is going to take us uh, into that long-range guidance. You know, and that's what we've got to go Okay, Kevin, I just... Okay, I mean, but we, now let's talk fought, about... Some, I, I need to talk about expenses Jim, for a second, yeah. David. You know, I, I run a okay. restaurant. Okay, that's anecdotal. That's not empirical. But I know that when we have bathrooms that are not clean, when we have people who want to use the bathroom, and yes, they're not going to pay. I totally get that. But we have to add a shift member. And it hurts our profitability. I cannot believe that the licensees didn't see that, too. No one wants to add a shift member because it costs too darn much. KJ, how are you going to keep costs down if you add to add a shift member? Well, Jim, you know, we, we've worked on many ways to help increase productivity. Part of that is business simplification. If you look at the set of things we've done just over the last uh, six months, we launched some new operating processes in the store called Deployment 2.0, and that simplified all of the baristas' jobs, allowing them to spend more time focused on the customer. You know, in addition to that, you know, we're constantly looking for ways to use technology to help simplify and allow us to get more productivity in our stores. I've been in this business a long time. I've watched companies grow dramatically for many years, but they typically do reach a point where it becomes much more difficult to grow. As you keep coming back to the idea that you will be able to put that growth number up there. Jim is sort of saying, well, why not just say this is what we are and it's fine to be that? Mm -hmm. Why not? Well, I think, you know, what we've done is we've looked at our business and we've tried to be very thoughtful and disciplined in setting out our targets, declaring the priorities. And, you know, what we've outlined in terms of our long-term guidance last year is still what we believe. Now, we haven't delivered on that, especially in this particular quarter. And, uh, you know, there's no excuses. Uh, the fact is that over this last year, we've been going through the process to streamline the company. And that is going to help us get more focus and more management attention on the key things we need to do to drive that. Um, in China, where, yeah. as you talk about, long term, been there 20 years, the growth trajectory is potentially enormous. I mean, I've seen the stats that you like to repeat, half a cup of coffee per capita a yeah. year yeah. versus 300 here in the United States. We can all imagine what that would mean if they were to ever meet our level of coffee consumption. Are you concerned, though, at all about what's going on right now in terms of the back and forth and the trade uh, dispute between our two countries? Even though I know you view Starbucks China as a Chinese company, yeah. do the Chinese, or is it possibly get caught up in some sort of boycott or something well, like that? Well, you know, as you mentioned, we've been in China for 20 years, and uh, we've been very thoughtful about how we've built our brand and built our company in China. You know, it's built in China for China. And, you know, that said, I've also been clear that, you know, we're not immune to geopolitical events that might unfold, yet we're going to stay focused on the long term. And, uh, you know, and, and we believe in the growth potential of China. We're deploying capital in China, the acquisition of East China Joint Venture. We're building 600 new stores a year. And that strategy is going to remain the same because we are playing the long game. Uh, and finally, on that long game, you've talked a lot about your dis digital initiatives and how important that is to getting people to come in. Uh, 75 million people make, uh, make a visit once a month, I guess, yeah. but 60 million of them are not membership rewards. What's, what's the number that you would like it to be, and what is a realistic goal for this company to have in terms of enlisting people in that membership uh, community? Well, clearly, the more digital relationships we have, the better. I mean, it is the number one most powerful thing we can do in the United States to drive same-store comp growth. And, uh, you know, we're at 15 million active rewards members using our mobile app and mobile payments. Our mobile payments is the number one mobile payment scenario in the U.S. today. Uh, and just in the last 90 days, we added another 5 million uh, registered customers. So we're now at 20 million digital, digitally registered customers. 
With the set of initiatives we have around customer acquisition, that five million that we added, that number is gonna just continue to grow quarter after quarter. You know, look, if we get to, uh, you know, if we get to 40 to 50% of the customers that visit us, if we have a digital relationship with 40 to 50% of them, you know, that would be an outstanding result for us. And that's what we intend to do. Kevin, we appreciate your time. Uh, Howard Schultz leaves in uh, 10 days. Are you going to miss him or are you going to be happy to see him sort of go? Well, look, I, uh, Howard, Howard is a good friend and, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate that, uh, you know, I've known him for 15 years or so. I've worked closely with him for the last 10 years. And you know he he has uh, you know had the willingness to teach me everything that he's learned over the last 30 or 40 years here at Starbucks, and I've had the desire to 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 learn from him, and so he will always be my friend, and uh, you know he's also going to be one of our largest independent shareholders, so I've got a lot of accountability to Howard. Yes, you do. Well, we appreciate your spending some time with us. Thank you. Thank you, David. Kevin Thank Johnson, you. CEO of Starbucks.